Climate change is the most serious threat facing the world today. Unless carbon emissions are cut very significantly to zero or beyond, global temperatures will continue to rise to catastrophic levels. Actions to cut emissions are improving, but from sources like agriculture or industry, they are very hard to reduce to zero. So interest is growing in how carbon dioxide can be removed from the atmosphere and stored in soils, forests or oceans, or buried underground in a process called carbon dioxide removal, or negative emissions. Theoretically, there are several ways of doing this, but one option currently receiving attention is bioenergy with carbon capture and storage, or BECS. BECS mainly involves burning biomass, plant matter that was once alive, for heat and electricity. The types of biomass used include wood from forests and fast-growing energy crops. When this biomass is burned, the carbon dioxide emitted is captured before it enters the atmosphere and transported to long-term underground storage. Proponents say that even without carbon capture, bioenergy is already carbon neutral because the emissions from burning the biomass will be reabsorbed by the trees or plants during their regrowth. If these emissions are instead captured and stored, the net result should be negative emissions. But this isn't necessarily the case. The assumption is only valid if the trees or crops being burned for becks were planted specifically for this purpose on land that was not already capturing carbon dioxide. Otherwise, in reality, biomass harvests reduce the amount of carbon captured and stored. It can take years or decades for new saplings to reach the size of the harvested trees, and during that time, the now felled trees would have grown even larger and captured more carbon dioxide. Some species can continue to grow and store carbon for hundreds of years. The BECS process itself also consumes energy and produces emissions from damaging soils at harvest time and from processing, transporting and storing the biomass and the captured carbon dioxide. So there are many scenarios where the emissions from the process negate the carbon stored underground, making it possible that BECS might even make matters worse. It's true that the BECS process produces energy, but there are other ways of doing this. Wind turbines, for example, or solar cells, which are not only zero carbon, but are now much cheaper than biomass for energy production. Just planting trees isn't perfect either. Forests are vulnerable to fire and disease, and monoculture plantations can reduce natural biodiversity. But in general, stopping deforestation, replanting trees and expanding forests offer better ways to remove carbon from the atmosphere while also bringing additional benefits for communities and wildlife. There is also the problem of size. Deploying BECs at the scale implied by some analyses would require more than 7 million square kilometres of land, more than twice the size of India and equivalent to half the area of current global cropland. This would not only displace food production, but also consume high quantities of water and fertiliser. BECs may have a limited role to play in carbon dioxide removal, but only when it relies on genuinely low carbon feedstocks, cultivated and harvested in the right locations, and with the right ecological safeguards. It should stop being treated as the default option, which many analysts currently do, and must be carefully evaluated alongside natural climate solutions, such as growing forests and other negative emissions technologies like direct air carbon capture. Policymakers need to look at all these options as a matter of urgency, how to scale them up and how to govern their use to make sure they work as intended. Despite their many downsides, we will need carbon dioxide removal solutions in one form or another, though this cannot be used as an excuse to carry on burning fossil fuels. We need to start working out the right solutions urgently.